goal game. He had spent a few days in the hospital this week with appendicitis. He did not have the operation. He was back in the goal tonight, and he was tough, robbing Ted Donato a couple of times. Dejarda, and then with a the shot here, Kirk Muller puts in the rebound, his second goal of the game. The Habs had a 2-0 lead, but the Bruins come back. Paul DiPietro, Di rather, picks up the loose puck and puts it past Riendo. 3-0 Montreal had the lead. Here come the Bruins now. Adam Oates finds a way to beat Patrick Waugh. He lost sight of the puck, it looks like. And then Steve Hines will get the original shot, get it back again, let it go once again. And Ted Donato then with the rebound as he's being checked. Montreal's lead is down to one goal. 3-2 to two is for that early play. The Devils and the Sabres. Scott Stevens taking out Yuri Himalev there, but it didn't slow him down. He had a couple of goals. Randy Moeller, then to Dale Howardchuk, fighting Wayne Presley. It was a 1-1 game. John Muckler saying, team, you got to play defense as well as that. In the second period, it was a 2-1 game. John McClain with the big shot. It's deflected, and Claude Lemieux takes the feed. There was definitely a pass on that play. And Lemieux then afterwards with some words for Dominic Hasek. They go after each other. And Claude Lemieux has the goal there, has the last laugh at that point as he goes to the ice, looking perhaps like another Lemieux on that play as Hasek goes after him. And right now, Buffalo has the lead 3-2. to two. Yuri Himalev has two goals in this game. These guys got to start brushing their teeth. Shot. And again, Amante with the rebound, 2-0 for the Blackhawks. They are not done. Joe Murphy gets free, and that's a tough one for Felix Potman there. Struggled, was handcuffed. 3-0 was the lead. Then it's 3-1 when Peter Zezel finds Bill Berg. He completes the play, beating Eddie Balfour, 3-2. The Leafs suddenly right back in this one. After Welcome back once again to the new Dodge intermission report. Updating this one between New Jersey and Buffalo. John McClain left alone on the left side. He finds a way to beat the goaltender. Pittsburgh had one chance to get it out of the zone. McKechnie failed to get it out, and you usually end up paying for it in those situations. Here's the walk out of the corner that started it all by Pavanka, and the scramble that ensued. Then Joey Juno, you can see Barrasso was down. You can see Pavanka was pushed in his direction, and that's why Barrasso, he doesn't know why Pavanka is there. He just knows that he is progress was impeded but really Pavanka as you can see in that replay was pushed in by Thomas Sandstrom nothing that uh, Tom Barrasso could do obviously the referee Dvorsky saw that whole situation develop he was right on top of it he signaled goal right away and he's right there's another look there's Sandstrom pushing Pavanka nothing Pavanka can do there nothing Barrasso can do there Joey Juno took it the Chicago Blackhawks three nothing lead has evaporated the Leafs and the Hawks here. Dmitry Mironov scores here just inside the post and ties the game at three apiece. Back. The first of speed, here's Yager. Yager in! He passed off, and Bopre made the stop on Strucka. Get back and make the right decision. He'll die for the other guy on the two-on-one. It was Straka, I believe. Hatcher dove. He got his stick far enough up the ice, and he was able to intercept it. There's Yager driving wide. He's trying to hold off the mat. Look at that. Hatcher back. Got his stick in the way. Saved the potential goal. That's right, Sean. And the MCI proof positive play of the night is the fact that Patrick Waugh was playing at all. Appendicitis throughout this week. In the hospital this morning. Out this morning for practice. He had 24 saves after two teams. Players are getting tired. The ice is heavy out there. you got to change quick. Mullen off to Sandstrom. Goes to the goal mouth. It was blocked by Beaupre. It's 6.26 left. The goaltending story of the night, Patrick Waugh's return, but the save of the night belongs to Dominic Hasek. As he's being buzzed here, makes a couple of great saves, and then this one on the open net comes up with a stop. Wow. Hasek... Pittsburgh trying to throw everything at the net they can. There's Tockett faking it. Just go to the net. Everybody go to the net. There's Lemieux. He's got a crowd around him again. And this time it's Pavon. Pulled over and then turns to Glenn Anderson and says, I'll hit you real hard. Get away from me. Still in the first period, 1-0. Islanders. the other goalie, Mike Richter, picks Dan Plant. Then Plant comes out and picks him. 
First career goal, Islanders scored in the first two shots, 2-0. Two Mike Keenan said to Alexei Kovalev, tell Zuboff we need a goal. And there it is, Zuboff with the blast, top shelf, 2-2 two -two tie. Some Ranger fans thinking about 1981 when the Islanders swept them. We're still tied in the second, no we're not. Off the steal, Messier shoots and scores, he had two goals. Rangers would win 5-2. First four-game Rangers sweep from Jean Rattel and company. Did it to Chicago 22 years ago. Rangers outscored the Isles by 19 goals. 72 Bruins had outscored the Blackhawks in a sweep by 20. Out to Dallas and St. Louis in a bid for another four and out. Physical game throughout. Mike Bedetto meet Kelly Miller. Took his head off. No, it's just a helmet. Mike Lauer gets Miller back and have a seat. And then Tom Tilly topples Dave Gagne. Hey. The Blues controlled the play when they actually played hockey. Murray Barron takes Shane Churla out. Loose puck to Basil McRae for the one-timer. But Darcy Wackawak makes the save. Then in the second period, 1-0 Blues. Madano the shot. Saved by Joseph. A flurry out in front. Loose puck. Madano rifts it home. Coach Bob Berry, the javelin throw audition is next year. Late third period, Madano. It's a power play goal. The Stars win 2-1. Darcy Wackelock, the surprise starter throughout most of the Darius Kasparaitis got away with most of his hits yesterday. This was yesterday, but Glenn Anderson wasn't called for that, and this is a good hit on Sergei Nemchinov that put Dan Shack through the lines with right into the bench. But that's the way Kasparaitis has it. More time than what he did. Veteran Mike Gartner pushing him off the puck. Right on the tape to Rob Pearson. Pearson all alone, one-on-one -on -one with Belfort. See Belfort challenging outside of his crease. And then just before that, Wendell Clark with the wicked snapshot that he has off the off wing. Look at the knob of the stick. Oh, that's the right stick to use right there. It just went off the right. Looked like the stick in the elbow of Eddie Belfour. And their scoring chance. Paul Eisenbart's number 14. You're going to see his stick tip it just between the legs of the goaltender, Felix Potvin. A perfect hand-eye coordination play by Eisenbart. Nobody from Toronto has taken him out. Bob Rouse is to the right. And Paul Eisenbart all alone in front of Potvin. No chance between the five-hole, one-nothing game. Dot enables the rebound to go. Eddie Belfort couldn't control it to his left, trying to sprawl back to his left. And the loose puck by Bill Berg. Berg coming from the right, anticipating the play. Weinrich tried to go to him. Berg eluded him. And that little chip-in shot ties the game at one. J.J. Daniel, the puck comes free. And watch Patrick Waugh on Ted Donato. Comes up with a big stop. It's still scoreless. Gary and Bill. Face off here. The right wrist. They think he took a shot and might have hurt it. He did leave practice early this morning. I talked to Ken Rega. It was enough of a problem that Rega got some wiggles in his stomach, thought he might get the start, but Barasso says he's fine. Wiggles in his stomach. I like that. Come up with that puck. It was wide open. And Dmitry Kristic was absolutely lonely at the side of the net, and that's who Juno was trying to pass to. But Barasso smartly kept his his glove low. Watch this. He gave a rebound. Now watch Juno. On the left of your screen, you can see Twitchy standing there. Go oh, keep the glove low, baby. Wide open. Well, the playoff ice. It's going to be a dump in. Look at Doug Brown here, number 24. He wants to get on the chase on the dump. Keith Jones rides him all the way across the ice, all the way, all the way, all the way. We stop it right here for a second. You'll see that Doug Brown ends up getting ridden into the boards. Here comes the puck this way, and that's what the Washington Capitals have done when the pitch. Even nice passing play here. Claude Lemieux out of the corner to John McClain. He's been hot the last couple of games, and it ties it at 1-1. Gary Bell. Two best defensive teams of the National Hockey League. But he pick up the slack when Dave Poulin isn't out there. Slaney, one of the capital defensemen, stayed close until Poulin could get there. So what they do is they hand off. Talk to Dave Poulin. Number four, Audette, with a nice pass out to Derek Plant. Upstairs. And it's 2-1 Buffalo. Gary and Bill. Ahead of him. You know, it's got to be back here. And we are back. He's able to make the play to, to Christich. And Yager was flat-footed. But Juno is the guy that bought the time. And a one-timer save as Priestich is going to be wondering what he's got to do to get it in there tonight. Well, Peter Bonder was as surprised as Dmitry Christich that that did not go into the net. That's exactly what they wanted. Watch this as Juno comes out. We'll let this roll and let Juno come up the sideboards a little bit. Now, if we stop it right here, you'll see that you got two Penguins out here. What Juno knows is if he can get it right in here to Peter Bondra, he's going to be able to do some business in front. Watch this. He gets it in front. We'll stop it right here. If he gets it in front, which he does, all he's got to do is get it through the crease this way, and there's a player open, and they make it ha made it happen so fast. You know, both Francis, number 10 for the Penguins, and Samuels at 28 were back in deep. If you make that play happen, bang, bang, it doesn't matter. 
Croatia you know, stays up as they have in every first period in this series so far. Defoe was down. I don't know if Lemieux had anything to shoot at, but it was a good shot from the point that rebounded right out to Lemieux. Gosh, he might have been trying to slide it through the five hole, but nobody was there to pass to. It has been a frustrating series for Mario Lemieux. That series tied at two games apiece, each team splitting on the other's home ice. J.J. Danio, an ally of Frady, collide there. Ted Donato picks up a loose puck, but guess what? Patrick Waugh with the big save, still scoreless. Five on three, Huskroft with the shot, Waugh with the save. Wesley, he shoots the save, Bork shoots, and Waugh saves that one as well. It is still scoreless in this game. As a draw from Carbonell back to Ifrady, gets a shot blocked, it goes through. Marwa gets a great chance, they're all around it. He makes a save, then they come down and get it out. And that's just a picture of the whole period. They're just doing it continually, and, and uh, it does. It wears on you after a while. Yeah, for Boston, 20 shots in the first period, as I mentioned, but nothing to show for it. Elsewhere tonight, Buffalo facing New Jersey. In this series, tied at two games apiece. Buffalo driver bounces off him, Yuri Himalev, on the open net, one to nothing. Then Jim Dowd does the work, finding Claude Lemieux. Lemieux then finds John McClain. All he has to do is put it into the open net past Hoshek, and it's 1-1. Donald Odette passes nicely to Derek Plant, but the shot is perfect. Up in the corner of the net past Martin Brodeur, and Buffalo has the lead now 2-1 as they look to take a 3-2 series lead. And once again, three goals in the first period. The last two games, this one has really opened up. I think it did open up a little bit too much for Buffalo's liking. I think they got to get back to tighter checking, uh, keep it more tighter in the neutral, neutral zone so there's less breaks. But they can't match New Jersey's firepower. They got to keep closer checking. If it gets into that, New Jersey's going to have success. Maybe they can keep it close checking right now with a one goal lead. And we'll be back with more in a moment to take a look back at the series which wrapped up yesterday, including the New York Rangers sweeping past the New York Islanders in four straight. When we introduced the four straight, the Rangers first sweep in 22 years as Mike Keenan was looking for that. But the Islanders came out hot. Turgeon, nice pass over to Dan Plant, and he just gets it past Richter. It was 2 0. Asa Tikkanen, though, risks the puck past Darius Kasparitis, and it trickles past. There's a goal there, and there's a big hit as they go to the body. Tavish laying it on as well. Leach over to Zuboff, fires it over Hextall's shoulder. This one ties the game at two apiece. Messier, he had a couple of goals in the game, including this one, the only soft one, I guess, that was let in by Hextall in this contest. He didn't have a great series, but the Rangers win it four straight in the 5-2 final. I just think to sweep the Islanders uh, with the problems they've given us over the years, uh, that's real surprising. But the idea is just to win four games. We were able to do it a little quicker in this series, but uh, it didn't really matter. It's not uh, more, uh, you know, it's not, not more elation in here because we beat them four straight. Just the win is, is, was good for us. What's interesting about the New York Rangers is here's a team, they sweep their bitter rival. You expect them to be overly excited. But as a team, they say the work has just begun before them, and that has sweeped their way in the first round. Mike Medano had a terrific series. Phil Housley, though, drawing first blood here with a shot. walk a lock got a piece of it, but it gets past him. He stopped just about everything else from there on in, and things he didn't stop his teammates helped him out with. Mike Medano had both goals. He tied the game at 1-1. As you look at Wakala coming out to grab this puck as well, bodies flying past him. Big shot there as Curtis Joseph has the save, but watch Madano come around from behind the net. The puck comes right back to him, and he finds the open net. And here's the one that wins the game. He just lets this blast inside the post. Cujo had no shot to stop this. Bob Barry a little unhappy here towards the end of the game. There was a timing problem. But the Dallas Stars get the sweep of the St. Louis Blues four straight, and they're heading on. Things went well in the playoffs uh, for me this first series. Uh, it's the boards. Is that true? Well, I keep my elbows down. First period here, then Rick Tockett has the puck. And, and at one point, right about here, there are two of them. They're Tockett on one side, Sandstrom on the other side, and only Sylvain Cote back. It's a two on one. Now, Real time, we timed it. Four seconds have elapsed when we stop it this time and show that Sandstrom has been eaten up. Tockett has his hands full in front and two other capitals have made it back into the zone. And out of the picture, there's actually a fifth capital that is back checked. That's the hockey version of the four second 40, folks. The capitals, two words come to mind in describing the capitals, team and work. The pads as Larry Murphy 
had a pile up in front of him. What he needed to do was pick it up, get it over, and it didn't happen. Not sure it would have mattered. Boy, there was a massive humanity all around Byron Defoe. You know, the Capitals don't get caught very often. This is what the Penguins try to do, spread the play out. Long passes, 50-footers, 60-footers. This is one of the few times in this entire series they were able to do it. Here comes Murphy. A bunch of traffic. That's this big oak tree standing around Byron Defoe to try to shoot it through. Joy Mullen may have had the best chance, but he couldn't get it under Defoe. I still have no idea where that went, but it looks like a pretty big crowd to me. Right along the ice and right into the pad. Up in the blue line, the Pittsburgh rookie. We pick it up right here. Tamer is standing up, and you see that there are two Capitals coming on him on this play. Once they make the play, we stop it again right here. And you see the reason it was a tough play for Tamer is once he missed his man, it was a two-on-one right here on Larry Murphy. He almost got to back up on the play and read it as a three-on-two. He read it as, a, as more help coming back than he really had. Right up to block the shot, and it never comes from Silva Cote. He can't get up. Watch him. He's on the crawl. <laughs> the off shuffle. You got to get there. Oh, he's a robocop. I'll tell you what. Nobody is tougher. Nobody plays harder than that guy, and he tries to get it done even when he's on his face. He, he's the kind of guy. I'm I would not be surprised ever to see him even try to block a shot. If his only thing was his face that he had to work with, he'd throw his face in front of it. I certainly believe that. Yep. Anything to win. Alf Samuelson coming in at a surprising shot or stand up. You know where the shot is going before you go down. But watch this. Ridley's going to cut in to two on one. Took the shot. Tom Barrasso looked like he started to go down when the shot was on its way and kind of got caught in between. But a good decision by Mike Ridley to let this puck go. And then he had Paul Samuelson between him and Bondra, the guy that he might have wanted to pass to. So Mike Ridley has tied the game. And sure enough, the way this series has gone, big first periods for the Pittsburgh. Shock just redirects this to Alexander Mogilny against Martin Brodeur. He goes upstairs on the back end. 3-1 Buffalo. Gary and Bill. Boy, what a play by Kevin Hatcher. Following up on the play, you never know what you're going to get, but Kevin Hatcher made it happen. First of all, the Pens read the play wrong when Juno came in. Look at both defensemen backing up. Nobody went to Juno. They both went to Bondra. That allowed Juno to get his shot away. It went off Murphy's skate. The rebound to Bondra. And what a play by Juno. Look at Hatcher just drifting in. Once again, the Penguins guilty of plowing. The Capitals defenseman could be wide open. That has been a problem for the Penguins in this series. Point men consistently open. And this time, the Penguins have paid for it dearly. They trail now 2-1. Kevin Hatcher, watch him draw it back to the backhand. Barrasso had his stick out there. They may have even hit Barrasso's stick. Well, I think he got a piece of it. Tom Barrasso had a chance at that simply because he's big. But Hatcher's big move was the fake shot, just a little twitch that made Barrasso go down. Then it was just a matter of avoiding his long reach. Oxview comes around from behind the net to the backhand. Hoshek was trapped back in the net. Never had a chance with this one. 3-2. Oh, that's strong. That's Randy Burge without his helmet. He not only hit Sandstrom on the other side, but he made this play happen way back over on this side. That was close. Ronald Walchuk. Front of the net as he was getting squeezed off the play. He was able to actually spin away and pass it on his forehand to, to Kevin Stevens. If the Pittsburgh Penguins are looking for a sign, a positive sign, they may have found one here. Not only San Jose and the Maple Leafs, and this one at the end of one period, all tied up. Wendell Clark gets three whacks at it before he finally puts it past Irve, one to nothing. But then watch Garpinov, the nice pass to Igor Larionov, and watch the shot. Just inside the post, he beats Felix Potvin, and the game is tied after one at one apiece. Larionov, a goal tonight, 11 points leading all playoff scores. In this one, if you're San Jose... It may be too much to handle. It's Moe's 7 ring rotation and bone-crushing checks. It's NHL Stanley Cup Hockey, part of the Super NES Sports Network, and it's in a league of its own. That series against the St. Louis Blue. Yerky Lumi with it in his own zone. Over to Jeff Cornell to Murray Craven. He's in. He scores! Murray Craven! And the Vancouver Canucks have jumped out on top and won. Of Wattelock, the goal that he should have. But a nice little move by Cornell to feed the puck over to Craven. Craven, one little step, and you see it. Just a quick snapshot. That's right through the five. Hole, right between the legs of Wattelock. One of the keys we were talking about. the Canucks. With it is Martin Jelenar. Loose puck in front. Whiffing at it was Jeff Brown, and the goal comes off. 
The gloves come off. And some fireworks in the corner. One of the competitors is Sergio Momesso. Five players vying for possession. Coming out with it is Jeff Cortnell for Vancouver. Cortnell on left wing. Jelena going through that as a screen. Craven shoots again. Now Vancouver the exam. No, looking for a pass the whole way. Decides to go back to Murray Craven looking for a second goal of the game. Where is uh, you can't tell from there at all where the heck that puck is. But from an overhead camera, maybe we'll get a better chance at that. One-timer shot. Puck doesn't even get through. I think it's under Ludwig the entire time. And Ludwig is so good at blocking shots. I mean, that is one of his biggest assets as a defenseman. He's behind his own net. Oh, he gets it away. They score! Jeff Portnell says, thank you very much, Mike Medano, who served that one up. The corner's on the table. Everything's set for him, basically. Now, Madonna's got plenty of speed, and he has more time to break out. Murray Craven's going to feed him off to the one side, and what happens is Madonna thinks he's got his puck, and he's got two options coming around the back of the net. Fired up the boards or carry it, and say an ill-advised pass to who he thought was Hatcher right there, and it wasn't. It was Portman. Behind the puck in the corner. Behind the band. As the game goes on, and that's why the first 10 or 15 minutes was so important for both clubs, but more, for, more so for Dallas. But you see McPhee coming in hard on the offside. Oh, oh, my. See, there's the problem. The open gate of the door going into the Dallas bench. It was a good hit by McPhee, and it caught the right hip area. Struggling with the puck. He feeds it nicely to Mark Osborne, who has the entire open net. Toronto up 2-1. Back to you. You're welcome. <laughs> Modano intercepts. Modano's in trick platter there, and McClain holding his ground. He's your classic stand-up goaltender, and he made the save. He may very well be one of the smoothest moving goaltenders in the National Hockey League. I mean, he's got a very simple style. He's a, he's a bigger kind of guy over six feet, but he never really commits. He gets himself in good position, doesn't over move, over overextend himself. But another giveaway in, in the defensive zone. So far in this game, we've seen a couple. Madonna makes, makes a nice play at the blue line and feeding his line mate. Trent Platt and the shot trying to go to the stick side but again the position of where Kirk McLean is he really had no problem with that Kirk McLean is a very smooth goaltender and I think just coming off quite simply coming off the legs of Bob gaining the Dallas Stars but so far we just have yet to do so Pavel Burry will never have a trouble with legs but the position of walk look nice coming out challenging but he lost his balance coming back and then he tripped over his own feet, so to speak, and before covering up the rebound, Pavel Burry trying to trick him in center. Darian Hatcher trying to control it. Murray Craven takes it and takes it away from him. The shot, and he hits the goaltender. Walk the lock high in the chest protector. Oh, we're still hurt, Tom. You feel him up here, though. Oh, there's, there's just a spot in that crease of your shoulder and arm. And, uh... Folks. <laughs> He's wearing the C. You see the captain of the Dallas Stars is Shane Sherlock. To Gagne, back to his brother Neil, back to himself. He feeds on the rebound, gets a hold of his own rebound, battles it through before taking a hit from Dave Babbitt. This one just squirts underneath, almost the glove of Kirk McLean. McLean almost got his glove on it, but again, let's start off with what makes this happen. The big hit by Shane Churla. Got everybody going, saying, let's go. This one will... The Vancouver Canucks are supposed to be a tired hockey club. They've been flying when given the opportunity. Jeff Cornell, nice little feather pass to Trevor Linden. Now, Linden tries to take it to the backhand, but unable to do so as the puck squirted loose on him. And I think a, a large... Deal. Balloon going to go... Back and forth with this one. First balloon gets it to Whitney. He knocks it back in the backhand, and Felix Potvin handcuffed a little bit. It's tied. Tom and Derek. John. He doesn't panic in that net. Here's Portnoy. Makes the bad angle shot. And Walker. It's been an interesting matchup. You know, this guy had to be hot for the Sharks to have a chance. Urbe. And Toronto attacking. Wendell Clark, nobody moves him in front. He gets three whacks at it, finally pokes it in. One to nothing for the Leafs. Kevin Constantine says, hey, how about some help out there? Leafs get a little clumsy in their own zone. And the giveaway. Igor Larionov, watch the shot. Just inside the post. Time the game at one apiece. Mark Osborne left the game, banged up with a bad wrist. In the second period, Urbe, bad time clearing the puck, and Osborne was back to score to make it 2-1, and then watch this 2-on-1. Pat Balloon on the backhand, and Felix Potvin struggling there. This guy has a, a weakness of any kind. It's a little bit like Hasek. When he gets outside the crease, 
uh, exciting things happen. This is the second uh, delay game uh, he took for getting it over the boards, and he does it because he flips the puck. He doesn't shoot it like good puck handlers like Brasso. He flips it. And again here, you see uh, Eastwood going wide here. The puck's free. He doesn't know it yet. Out to the point. But you can see all the sharks coming down to help their little buddy out there. But when he leaves the crease area, it, it, a, good, a lot of exciting things happen. It, it, that's the only thing that might be classified as a weakness of Arders. Yeah, Kevin Constantine is saying, get back. She updated on the World Ice Hockey Championships. Canada with a big day today going up against Russia. Canada undefeated. Watch the passing. Sakic, Sador, Jeff Sanderson finally finishes things off. Time the game at one apiece. Sackick had a terrific game, couple of goals and an assist. Here he takes the feed from Shanahan on the backhand, 2-1. Canada's on top. He added an empty netter, and Canada wins 3-1. They finish in first in the A pool. They'll play Czechoslovakia in the medal round on Thursday. The USA, a loser to Finland, 7-2. But to save every puck that comes at you, and uh, you'd like to uh, play as well as possible. And if you are, you'll have all kinds of... Uh, little streaks going and whatnot and so you uh the most important thing though is, is getting the win and, and uh, everything else is secondary so uh if you're doing your job as well as you can um things will usually work out and while rick is trying to stop the puck what about this time hatcher steals it from uh, graves good play here big save by rich here again again this is all two two here chris ditch again a two on one just off the skate richter comes out saves her bacon again two two again Clear cut two on one also. Joey Juno across, just fans on it. Richter is there. Two two again. Pull in two on one. Great save by Richter. Like right there, it could have been it could have been six to two for uh, the Caps. Uh, the Rangers were very lucky to win that game. Take the first one right here, and then he lets it go right off the post and in. Wakala came out challenging, and you know that shot has to come up high because you've already got Hatcher along the ice. And Wakalak, as he normally does between plays, he tries to get those eyes closed, and if the heart's fluttering a little bit, tries to calm himself. Darcy Wakalak clearly needs a save right now. John Saunders, John. Well, Tom and Darren, the Sharks trying to get the go-ahead goal. There's a bit of a scramble in front. Potben with one save. Nazarov gets another shot at it from a bad angle. It goes over top, hits the stick just before rolling in. It's still tied it to a piece. Tom and Darren. On the power play, Jeff Brown with the long shot. Good glove save through traffic. Now that's sneaking through and Walker Lux deep in his net, but he's still able to react. Jeff Brown, a nice, clean, quick shot. And although that might have gone wide around the post, moves in from the